Hello. Today we are discussing invoice or payment reconciliation. So payment reconciliation is a thing that you need often. The reason is you have a customer, let's say he has some other business with you, like a customer, a customer he is buying from you, of course, he is buying from you and he make payments normally. If the story ends there, there is no issue. So it will, it will come like partly paid, paid, paid. You know, it's, a, it's overdue everything. It will show here as a status of each invoice. So what happens if he has something, let's say if he says that we, we as a company rented something like we, we rented a, a shop to him. I know he rented a shop to us and he, he all, we owe them some money. So he says, okay, let's adjust. Let's adjust that amount, or something like uh, we some sometimes back we he we bought some money from him for for something uh, like we owe him some money or we have a vehicle from him so that we 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 took from him so we want we he sold some vehicle or something like that. There are there are so many. I mean, it's if we, if you are in finance. There are so many give and takes that happen. So as a customer, as a customer, he, if let's say he's taking, we, we are printing an invoice for a customer uh, called Jolie B. He buy from us something like a pen or we always for something like 500 reals or rupees or dollars or whatever. And what happens? The moment we print an invoice and submit it, it come here as unpaid, unpaid. It's, it's unpaid invoice. But if we are making a payment normally, like as a normal payment, and let's say, I mean, he made a full payment. Here, the paid amount, paid amount is 500. And uh, no, I'll, I'll make a payment for 200. Oh, sorry, 200. And what happens? A reference for the bank, I put mode of payment cash to make simple because these things we have explained in the past videos. And I, I put it here. So what happens, this invoice, this sales invoice, you can see it, it's partially paid, see? It's partially paid, this invoice is partially. He has two invoices now. Both are one, I, I put uh, for under session. So now it is, there are two invoices partially paid. We just created this only, this one from a pre previous session. In any case, and we make another payment to clear the dues, let's say. How much is due now 300 and that 300 we are paying and oh boy. paid and now now he's look he's paid you can see it's paid here it's done his transaction is done but i'll create another invoice now for the same company And this time I'm selling him for something like, say 500, let's say. No change in the amount, anything. We just, again, we paid him. Okay, look whether again, there is an unpaid amount. Now on this invoice, I'm making a payment 300, uh, 300 and the customer will tell you, okay, 
you already owe me some amount. Uh, that I will explain. So on this payment, we are, he's making a payment of how much I told you? 200, right? He paid 200. So 200. And on this 200, there is how much is due now? How much is due? It's partially paid. And how much is due? Due amount is, obviously it's uh, 300, it should be. So if you want, I will show you the accounting ledger for this customer, 500. And there is, did we make that submit? There's a payment entry. This surely will submit at 200. So if you take, so if you are trying to make another payment, it is here. It's here 300, 300 is remaining. And if you, if you, if you want to see that, you can go to a account receivable. Account receivable and see his statement. Uh, what is this customer? You take this and you will see 800. Actually this 500 is from other invoice. So ignore that, this 300 is the one, oh, I'll close that. So what, just for to avoid that confusion, what I will do, clear that, I'll clear this one because it's making trouble and confusion for you. Okay, now there is only one invoice is partially paid. That's 500, 300 is paid. So if you take an account receivable statement for this particular one, you will see here, you will see here receivable 300. 300 is the amount that is outstanding amount. This column outstanding amount don't make any confusion. So he or he owes 300. But the guy tell you that something like you, I'm renting you a shop. So 300, you you owe me. So adjust it with that invoice. It's, he simply say that adjust with that amount with this invoice. So how we will do that? because you are you cannot make a payment here this this particular entry what i am doing here i am making a journal entry in the past somewhere in the past like we owe him on the in the june somewhere and we what we will do um jolly pocket as customer okay so he, he says that he owes us 500, uh, no, let's say 1,000, 1,000 real. So he, he paid us in the past cash, something like cash, he paid us 1,000. So I entered it here. So what happens if you take an account receivable for this particular one, what happens? This invoice still shows, you can see a strange thing here. There is, there is a thought, this is still there. I mean, this in, I'll show first the sales invoice. Sales invoice, you can see this, this guy, this invoice is still partially paid or it's unpaid or whatever. 
the reason is even though he gave we on this invoice on this invoice we have to pay him first he gave we we owe him 1000 then he bought us 500 then he paid 200 and the remaining actually we owe him how much Now he we owe him thousand first. Thousand first. Then he bought five hundred from us. Then he paid two hundred. Okay. Now what happens here? One thousand two hundred he already gave me, and we invoiced him five hundred. So how much remaining? Seven hundred. The fact of the matter is we have to give the customer seven hundred reals. But this invoice is still showing partially unpaid. If, if you take a invoice statement, it will show him he owes money. Actually, we are owing him money. So in this case, we need to make something called payment reconciliation. This guy. Payment reconciliation is the thing, this, this one, payment reconciliation. So what it's actually doing, any customer or supplier that we are paying or receiving outside the invoice and the invoice still showing unpaid or paid, we can use this screen to adjust it. So what you do, you put here, customer and you get a reconciliation entry. What is the reconciliation entry? Here, it will show all the due invoices in this type. In this side, it will show all the due invoices. In this type, in this side, we, he will show how much we owe, owe him. Some other entries like journal entries or some other, any other entry, it will show here, the payment side. So what you do, you can take this, it will show all the invoices here, not just one. Now for this trial, we are only putting that. Here the payment entry, whatever the payment he made, it will show here. So you take here, click here and click here. I mean, again, I repeat, there will be so many here. There will be so many, there can be. And then you allocate it. Allocate means this amount will be, it will show here, allocation entry. Allocation entries, this JV is adjusted against, it's like this JV is adjusted against this invoice of 300, okay? So I'm allocating this here, just put allocate or reconcile or allocate. I put reconcile here, successfully reconciled, okay? Now, if you, if you go to sales invoice in this case, sales invoice list in this case, what happens? It's all paid. The guy is not going to pay any more to us because it's paid, paid, paid. And if you take an account payable statement for him, for this particular guy, account, no, not account payable, account for this particular customer, Jolly B, what happens here? The remaining amount it will be shown here that actually we owe him 700. This outstanding 700, you can see a minus here, a minus. Here. Okay, this 700 minus that means even it's an account payable, uh, account receivable we are going to pay him. So that, that is, that's pretty much uh, about <clears throat> payment reconciliation, but I will tell you one thing in this case. Yeah, look, there is on the account setting, account setting, you can see something, enable common party accounting. You can see here, enable common party accounting. This is, 
actually, if you have a supplier, by the way, this payment uh, reconciliation also can be done for the supplier. Uh, that's the same screen, everything same. It will appear the supplier invoices. Okay, I'm not doing it uh, now, but it it's same for the customer and the suppliers. So just uh, do that. And this one, this particular thing is, if you have a customer, you buy from that. That's a very common scenario. You have a supplier, you sell him something, you buy something from him, but you sell something to them. So in that case, this is not very advisable to do that, but in this case, you can enable common party accounting. And if you enable this common party accounting on the system, then what happens? You can, you can create, you, on the customers, you can relate this, I'll just reload it. You can link this with a supplier. Actually what you are doing, you will create a supplier for the same account and this, and the customer for the same account and you link it here. Once you link it here, then you will get the same report. I mean, uh, both, both transaction in the same ledger account and the same reports, okay? That is the, I mean, that's no, accountants generally don't use that feature, but I'm just telling you that if, if you have some customers or somebody, uh, you, you want, I mean, you, it's, it's a very common scenario in your company to have supplies, supplies buying from you or the customer selling to you, then you can use this, this thing, enable common party accounting, okay? That is pretty much everything that we wanted to cover today. Thanks. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, send to us to training at erpgulf.com training at erpgulf.com send it and also we are we have started hosting in doha and also in johannesburg so if you are if you are if you are planning to host locally you can you can contact us thank you